Hiya there everybody, welcome back. Another lesson here, another reading lesson for fantastic Mr Fox. It's getting very intense. In the last chapter we were hearing that uh, the farmers came to dig Mr Fox out with shovels. They came crashing through the roof of the house. The foxes had to dig as quick as they could to get away. They dug and dug for over an hour. It was a long time to keep digging as a fox. And they managed to outrun the farmers. So chapter five today and then i got a wee task for you to do as well there we go. as the sun rose the next morning boggus and bunce and bean were still digging they had dug a hole so deep you could have put a house into it wow, that is deep but they had not yet come to the end of the fox's tunnel they were all very tired and cross dang and blast said boggus whose rotten idea was this Bean's idea, said Bunce. Boggus and Bunce both stared at Bean. Bean took another swig of cider. <laughs> then put the flask back into his pocket without offering it to the others. Listen, he said angrily. I want that fox. I'm going to get that fox. I'm not giving up until I've strung him up over my front porch, dead as a dumpling. We can't get him by digging, that's for sure, said the fat boggist. I've had enough of digging. Bunce, the little pot-bellied dwarf, looked up at Bean and said, Have you got any more stupid ideas then? What? said Bean. I can't hear you. Bean never took a bath. Blah. He never even washed. Blah. As a result, his... Oh, see, this is where Roald Dahl gets really good. As a result, his ear holes were clogged with all kinds of muck and wax and bits of chewing gum and dead flies and stuff like that. Ugh! And made him deaf. Speak louder, he said to Bunce and Bunce shouted back, Got any more stupid ideas? Bean rubbed the back of his neck with a dirty finger. He had a boil coming there and it itched. What we need on this job, he said, is machines mechanical shovels we'll have him out in five minutes with mechanical shovels this was a pretty good idea and the other two had to admit it all right then bean said taking charge bogus you stay here and see the fox doesn't escape bunce and i will go and fetch our machinery if he tries to get out Shoot him quick. The long, thin bean walked away. The tiny bunce trotted after him. The fat bogus stayed where he was with his gun pointing at the foxhole. Soon, two enormous caterpillar tractors with mechanical shovels on their front ends came clanking into the wood. Bean was driving one, bunce the other. The machines were both black. They were murderous, brutal-looking machines. They do look very scary, especially to a fox. They would look terrifying, eh? Here we go, then, shouted Bean. Death to the fox, shouted Bunce. The machines went to work, biting huge mouthfuls of soil out of the hill. The big tree under which Mr Fox had dug his hole in the first place was toppled like a matchstick. On all sides, rocks were sent flying and trees were falling in the noise was deafening. Down in the tunnel, the foxes crouched, listening to the terrible clanging and banging overhead. What's happening, Dad? cried the small foxes. What are they going to do? Mr Fox didn't know what was happening or what they were doing. It's an earthquake, cried Mrs Fox. Look, said one of the small foxes, our tunnel's got shorter. I can see daylight. They all looked round and, yes, the mouth of the tunnel was only a few feet away from them now. In the circle of daylight beyond them, they could see two huge black tractors almost on top of them. Tractors, shouted Mr Fox, and mechanical shovels. Dig for your lives. Dig, dig, dig. Goodness me, I need to lie down after that. It's very intense, isn't it? And very scary as well. How would you feel if you were one of those foxes? Yeah. I would feel terrified, I think. And that's actually what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at feelings and justifying your opinion. Here, I've got a picture. Now, this is from the original Roald Dahl books. 
here this is an illustration of the fo uh, the farmers not the foxes the farmers after they had shot off mr fox's tail and mr fox had escaped back into his hole how do you think those farmers were feeling how do we think now they hated mr fox didn't they they really did it's not too strong a word in this case they really did hate him they really wanted him dead and so they camped out overnight they only got his tail. He got away. How do you think they were feeling? I've got a few ideas. Anger. I think they're feeling pretty angry. Disbelief. Oh, that means couldn't believe what had happened. Oh, we were so close. How did he get away? Upset. I imagine they were all very upset about it. And I also think they might be determined. Maybe a wee bit more determined. Because they'd invested so much time and effort into trying to get Mr. Fox. They spent so much time on it that they're probably like, well, we've come this far. We've got to keep going now and get him. And so what we're going to do today is take these things, take these feel uh, our opinions on what the characters were thinking and justify our thoughts in the wee paragraph. So I've got here. I, talking about the farmers again, I've said I think they were feeling angry because Mr. Fox escaped and will continue to steal from them. So what I've said there in that sentence is I've said what the emotion I think they're feeling and then I've used that word because. Now because is a great word because it lines me up for justifying my thoughts, for explaining why I think that, for giving some evidence to explain that. So I think they were feeling angry because Mr. Fox escaped and will continue to steal from them. Got another one down here. They also might be feeling determined to not give up and to finally get Mr. Fox because they have already put a lot of time and effort into catching him. So I'm saying what emotion I think they're feeling. I'm inserting the word because. And then I'm justifying my opinion. I'm giving a reason. And that's what our learning intention is today. Justify your thoughts. And the task is to explain how you think the foxes were feeling as the diggers crashed overhead. I've got a wee picture there from, from the original books to get your mind going. Now, to do this task well, you need to imagine the emotions they felt, just like I did with the farmers. Maybe you could write down three or four emotions. How do you think Mr. Fox, Mrs. Fox and the wee foxes are feeling? How do you think? They're, are their hearts pounding? Are they scared? Terrified? Are they confident? Are they determined? How are they feeling? Once you've got that, we then need to try to write it out in sentences and you need to use the word because in there. Give at least three reasons and three emotions. So in that last example, I'd given two. I'd said they felt angry because he got away and they felt more determined to get him. That would be two. I'm looking for three of them. And it's really important that we do write in sentences. Capital letters, full stops at the end, full sentences. Should be about, again, a third of a page. You could even do some more. You could even do some more. You could talk about how the farmers were feeling whilst they were digging with their mechanical shovels, their big diggers. You could even write a wee bit about that if you want. Extend yourself. And once you've done that, would be amazing if you could post your work on Teams. If you're not in my class and you're watching this, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry. <laughs> it's fine. But if you are in my class, yeah, posting it on Teams would be great. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Tomorrow, moving on to the next chapter. Have a good one, guys.